Hey everyone and welcome to the second day of winter. So as I say that, winter here in the part of Queensland where we live is 20 degrees but it's beautiful and sunny. Having said that though, yesterday it was rainy and not cold, not as in put two or three jumpers on cold like where I grew up, but it was cold. But today it's a beautiful sunny second day of winter and it's um, Sunday. I just wanted to talk about how we feel when we, when things are going, when things are stressful or things aren't going well or there's a lot of overwhelm and stress in our lives and how we feel about it. Now, I remember something my mum said years ago. She said years ago that when dad had been alive, because he died when I was young, she had to be the social butterfly. She had to do all the cooking. She had to host dinner parties. She had to be the dentist's wife. But when he passed, she could just be the, I don't know if she used the words hermit on the hill, but she could just be, she could just live quietly and not have to talk to anyone. Now, she was also involved in the art gallery. She was involved with a whole lot of things. But I was thinking this morning, because of everything that's been going on here, I was only 14 or maybe 15 when I wanted to be a hermit with 46 cats. I mean, I also wanted to be a nun. So at that age, probably not very accurate. But that hermit with 46 cats, I get in my head, not a lot lately, but you know, how nice would it be? I have the dog looking at me over from his spot in the sun. How nice would it be to be in a place with a beautiful garden with lots of animals and not have to talk to people? Now, that might sound unfair, I mean, Pete's awesome. Not doubting that. My four kids are absolutely awesome. Yeah, okay, being a mum might have been stressful. I'm pretty sure now that I had post, no, it's it called prenatal depression, depression with them, but I, it wasn't diagnosed back then and I didn't know it back then, but I'm pretty sure that's what it was. Um, but is there anyone else out there who would prefer to sit at home with their own company with their beautiful dog or their cat and or their bird or horse or whatever, crystals, fish, I don't know, and just sit and read a book and watch TV or play, you know, or do a jigsaw puzzle or something rather than engaging with people. I find myself when we're out different places, I tend to sit and listen to people rather than talk a lot. It doesn't make me shy. I can talk and I will talk nonstop if there's something that's interesting. But for the most part, I sit and listen. There are a few people, a few friends we have where I'll sit and talk to them all day long. Um, and I love those interactions, those impromptu coffee interactions. But a lot of the time when we sit around with a whole lot of people, with a whole lot of people that might be coming in and out, like a pub or a restaurant or a cafe or something, a shopping centre, we can pick up the energies and the feelings of those around us. And it can be stressful and it can be overwhelming. And then when somebody actually tries to interact to you, sometimes all you can do is just feel very incoherent. Happened to me on the weekend. Somebody well-meaning person was asking these questions about what we're up to and what we're doing. And I was just sitting there going, I couldn't, well, I could talk, but it was like I just, Wanted to be home with my 46 cats. Uh, that's when that popped back into my head. So if you're like me and sometimes peopling is too much or sometimes you prefer to be in your own company or just with a few close friends or a couple of close friends, there is a way I've found to protect my energy in crowds, in shopping centres, etc., and that is you put on a, a cloak of protection or invisibility. So you just imagine putting on this thick, I think I've spoken to, about this in a YouTube video before, a thick, for me it's purple, velvety cloak that covers me from head to foot, foot up, and then I'm protected and I'm invisible. Now, I also wanted to talk about another couple of what I call witchy tips, but the older I get, the more I realise that the witchy tips are just how to interact with nature and how to interact with the world around us and how to be aware of the world around us. So when you sit 
Are you, first of all, do you sit a lot? And when you sit down, are you slouched? Or do you sit up straight? When you walk, do you drag your feet and slouch? Or do you walk with purpose, head hold high, confident? The way you sit, the way you stand makes a difference. To your energy, to your aura, to your attitude, the whole lot. If you're sitting somewhere where there's stagnant energy or it feels blur or it's crowded, it's crowded is not so easy, but if it's, um, if you're somewhere like at home and it feels stagnant, and you might not have a smudge stick or a sage stick to smudge and clear the area, because not everyone does, but you might have an incense phone or an incense stick you could just light and burn. Or you might have a candle. You can just light it and have it burn somewhere. Or you might have essential oils. Now, I'm not, the brand doesn't matter for the essential oils. But I have one here that's peppermint and one here that's on guard and it's good for immunity. So it's got clove and orange and different. What else has it got? Clove, orange, cinnamon, eucalyptus, rosemary in it for immunity. So, um, colds and frizz immunity. So, essential oils and you diffuse them in the diffuser or you can drop them on the bench top on the floor in the mop bucket or trick i think i've said before is get the oil drop a couple of drops onto your hand no more than that rub it together and inhale the aroma and that immediately boosts your mood and your energy levels so i find that the essential oils like the peppermint, the on guard, lemon, tea tree, and a few of the others, a lot of the others, frankincense and that as well, um, are great not only for boosting your mood and emotions, but also for keeping the area clean and not just of energies, but in the cold and flu season, keeping us healthy and not necessarily we won't get sick, but we will get less sick or it'll affect us less than it might otherwise. So when you're thinking about our energy around us or the energy of other people or things from the past that come up or things people from the past and their energy and things, there are ways you can um, raise your energy. Like I said, if you're slouching a lot, sit up straight. If you walk along dejected, stand up straight. If you're sitting a lot, get up and move around. Burn the um, incense, the candles, use the oils. Herbal teas are another good one and they have a dual purpose. So herbal teas, you can get a whole lot of um, mixtures these days as well as just the plain ones like peppermint, lemon, ginger, rubius, green tea, all those different ones. So they help with digestion. They can help with relaxation. And they can just help flush some of the toxins out of your body. Having a light squeeze of lemon juice in your glass of water in the morning can also help detox and get toxins out of your body. Oregano oil in the bottom of your feet is a great way to build your immunity and detox your body. You can put oregano oil in your chest, but sometimes it makes it feel like um, someone's cooking bolognese for me, not all the time, but just sometimes. The fresh air, being outside, there are other ways to raise our vibration and our energy level. Knowing, of course, that things happen in cycles and things like the moon phases, like the weather, like the climate, seasons, sorry. Um, even the days, there's, there's cycles to them, okay? So you might do all this work and feel the energy's great and then you'll get back in a slump later. It's the same as getting colds and flus or any other bugs or moods and emotions and things. Things, things do go in cycles. So that awareness is freeing. Yeah, we, well, you might have to release things more than once. So in June, my um, couple of weeks will be the be my eldest child's birthday now he hasn't spoken to me for quite a few years and that's not okay but my point being in June it's always going to be a bit yeah. so for some of June while I um, 
just think a little bit about him and wish we, we were in contact. And I'm sure we will be one day. But just it's that awareness that things will catch you, that things will come up for you and the awareness that you can work through it with things like whether it's essential oils or candles or getting up and moving or putting on your cloak of invisibility and protection. All those things can help. When you feel like you just want to go off and be at home with four to six cats. Now, I also find the writing helps, the creativity helps. So not just writing, um, playing in the garden certainly helps. Creativity, when I said that before, so jigsaw puzzles, making something. My point being that we all can feel that overwhelm, that I just want to stay inside and not do anything. And that's okay. The awareness of it goes a long way to working through it. Now, I don't have all the answers. I'll still not feel like peopling next time I go out somewhere in the crowd. Um, I'll still wish I was out in my garden. But if you can talk about it, if you can acknowledge it, and if you can work through it, then I don't know what my thing was going to be. And also remember there are those hidden gem, those people that you can just go, hey, coffee, and they'll have coffee with you and they energize you, they don't drain you. And they're gems that are worth more than anything. So um, happy Sunday, happy winter. For us here it's winter. Happy change of season, happy, you know, the, the same like, Rabbit, 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 which was for the first day of the month. And the, um, the what's the something for the first day of the month? The pinch and a punch for the first day of the month or a hit and a kick for being so quick. And my son came up with and a T-shirt and a bee sting for the first day of the season. Those things, like the rabbit, 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 the pinch and the punch for the first day of the month, they likely came from poems or nursery rhymes or things that people did years ago. Like a lot of the nursery rhymes had to do with life way back when. So one of them was to do with the plague. One of them was to, I can't remember all the stories, but they were linked to historical things way back when, which is an interesting um, piece of information. I'll stop there. Have a great Sunday, everyone, and talk soon. Bye.